God, we thank you that we get to live from your presence, not for your presence, but from it. That we don't have to strive to get God. Like, if we do all the right things and cross all the T's and dot the I's, do all the th right things, jump through all the right hoops, we're somehow going to get God as if it depends on us, right? But I love the fact that God loves us just as we are. He's near us. He's with us. We get to live from his presence instead of for his presence. How many of you, so many times in your life, you find yourself striving to, to feel God's presence? We can be honest, right? Thanks, Brenda, for being the honest one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, I see a thumbs up. I see that hand. <laughs> Isn't it good that we get to rest in the presence of an unconditional love? Love without condition. It means no matter what we've done, where we're at, just as we're at, as we are, he is with us and loves us and cherishes us. God of the universe, our Father, Almighty God. That being said, I asked Heidi to hang out for a little bit. She, Heidi, you can stay down there. She's good. Uh, and Tracy and I are going to talk at you a little bit. But I, and we might go up and do worship. I don't know. We, we were uh, really happy to get to feel the reality that uh, Tracy and I, that we get to share with you this morning. But we are going to do it in a little different way. Heidi's just going to play some music. And we want to walk you through activations in God's presence. So what we mean by that is we want to just help you and remind you. Uh, there's a lot of you, like Carol, and ones I, I see in this group that have deep histories in the Lord. Brenda, all of you guys, so many of you that I know personally. And I, I look at you and I go, they know how to be in the presence of God. They enjoy the presence of God. And somewhere along the, the way, we just forget. We wander from home. And I feel the Father inviting us home this morning to his presence, his nearness. His nearness is our good. And you know, I don't know about you, I'm just going to confess myself. But one of the reasons that I just do not continue to come back home is because I think it's something that I have to work out. I have to do. And so if you ever feel like something, like somebody saying, hey, you have to do this. You have to do this. It makes you not want to do it even more. <laughs> Am I the only person? If I go up to Amy and I'm like, Amy, right now, right now, I want you to stand up and clap and worship Jesus with all your heart. Not going to happen. You're like, it's like me coming up to you and saying, hey, let me touch your eyeball. Right? And if I came up to you right now and I literally like drew closer and closer and then I stuck my finger out to touch your eyeball, what would you do? She would lose her ever-loving mind. She turned into a homicidal maniac. <laughs> and sometimes we do this in church. We're like, get up, praise the Lord, stand up, sit down. And I'm just like poking you in the eye. Or there's other leaders. And it hurts. But if you know, but like, let's say this, like, let's not say that you had a physician and he was a good physician and you had a, 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 a leaky eye. You had like an infected eye. It would hurt like heck. You'd be squirming, but you would let that eye open to the physician to create surgery, right? 
because you knew that if the physician didn't touch your eye and start to heal it and work on it, it would not heal. And so it's hard. It's hard. Worship is hard. Church is hard. And and I love Don because he'll say the hard things. He's like, he's like uh, a friend said this to me one time. I but I rather uh, see a friend will stab you in the front, not in the back. Maybe that's not completely true. Maybe there's a partial truth to that. I get that. But I'd rather have a friend say, hey, I want to help your eye. It is oozing all over the place and getting on everything. I want to help you. Then stab me in the back and say, Aaron, he's the oozy eye. He is just disgusting. And I can tell you that the father this morning is so happy to connect with you. He's, he even went ahead of time, sent his son Jesus to die for you so you can have full access. Like a hundred, you ever get those access plans like on, on TV and, and on, on your social media or whatever it is where it gives you full access to all the thing. You buy a subscription to something. God has given you the full 100% access. But he tore the veil. He sent his own son, ripped the separation veil, and now we're in his presence. This morning, his presence is here. And even Aaron Brown can't change it. So, we're going to give you permission. You want to come up here and share with me? I, I, oh, here's a, one of these things, man. Check a wrist. Check any check in the cash. Check. Check. So, Tracy and I were talking. And we felt like God wants to give this community encouragement and one of the encouragements is just that you have permission you have permission to get completely lost in the presence of God or found in the presence of God or shmammered or completely wasted or completely known in the presence of God completely whole in the presence of God and we want to talk about permission. Can you share? Yeah. Hi, guys. So one of the practices I really love to do anytime I'm teaching is to talk about permission slips. How many of you guys have ever been a kid? <laughs> Yay. All right. So how many of you guys remember getting permission slips when you were a kid, right? It means an authority figure is giving you something to take to another authority figure, right? to give you permission to do something that might involve a little bit of risk, but it's for your own edification and growth, right? Essentially, hey, here's the really fun part, is now you are the authority figure. How cool is that? How many of you guys want to grow in authority and claiming your authority? I do. Everybody say, I, I am authority figure. <laughs> I am a authority figure. Can we raise our hands and say that? One, two, three. I, I am, am a authority, authority figure. figure. Right. right. Okay. So the practice of giving yourself a permission slip, this is about intention setting, okay? This is about explicitly saying to yourself, I have permission to, and then some sort of behavior or formation you wanna enter into. The, the other cool thing about it is because it's just intention setting with the Lord, you're not, there's no like repercussions if you don't actually walk it all the way out. It's just a place to start to grow in freedom. Does that make sense? And we love, I mean, Aaron, Aaron and I love freedom and because, and you, who doesn't love freedom? Anyway. I didn't start off loving freedom. I mean, I was raised in Assemblies of God Church, which is really great. They actually carry a lot of charisma. Just because you're charismatic doesn't mean you're free. And then I, but before that, I was raised in a cornerstone of uh, this it's like a, a version of the assembly of God that was just very proper. We had our hymn books in our in our pews, but uh, I was raised Catholic. So and she was raised Catholic. There's a lot of you know formality and 
that now this and this and this and this and that. And I love the tradition, but yeah. But now we've walked into a place of, of um, freedom because it's more before. and more. Yeah. And we're still working in progress, praise God, because God, this is a formation. I love the word formation because it gives you the 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 allowance or the permission, permission <laughs> to just be in process. Who, whoever feels like a work in process, right? Don's got it all figured out. He's. <laughs> I love Don because he's a real human and that he's a work in progress. And he shares with us through his progress. So, the permission slip. Essentially, sorry, I got off track. The Because you're intention setting with the Lord, right? And you are using language and your own taking responsibility for your own like awareness and this is a tool to help you further and step further into connection and engagement never like away so my example for you guys today actually is i i had to give myself permission this morning to like back away from the microphone because i really needed to be like totally free in worship this morning and be able to jump around and when God said, hey, how about you like get low? I was like, okay, I can do that. And sometimes, because I'm still learning, like the microphone is a little bit of a distraction because I know I have to stay close and I have to try to sing, all those things. Today I had to go, I give myself permission to just be in worship with the Lord because that's so much more important than the process of learning how to be on the platform, right? And so while it may have looked like I disengaged, what I actually did was step further into connection and engagement with the Lord. So it's a practice of going, where am I at? What do I need? I give myself permission to receive that in God's presence. So you kind of How to. many of you know, raise your hand if you know the verse, uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's the majority of us here. So, but what if we got to live that out? <laughs> we want to live out these scriptures and, and, we have true freedom that means it's just like this for example at our church we're not gonna pass the tray around you know why we're not gonna pass the tray around because for for offering because we believe it's between you and god not between you and just man and we're not gonna like look over your shoulder and condemn you and and, and guilt trip you and fear monger you to give us money but we're gonna put a little box in the back where nobody's looking for you to give because your worship is to the Lord and it's in spirit and it's in truth. It's the spirit of you reaching out into your wallet and reaching out into that box before the eyes of the Lord only. And it's the truth that you're a giver. And so not just that you're a giver, but that you actually give. And that's a hard one for me. And, but it's vulnerable and it's a real relationship, right? And it's a process. And you may not be the greatest giver this morning, but you're in a formation. You're in a process. You're a work in progress. And it's okay. So we want to, we're going to spiritually give out permission slips this morning. Okay? I want you just right now, I want to invite you, if you can, if you like, if you feel safe here, to close your eyes and, and see Jesus. And right where you walked into the church this morning, Jesus is walking in. I want you to vision that. Envision Jesus walking in right where you walked into the church building this morning. Now he's walking in. He's walking into the aisles. And he's coming up to you. And in his hand, there's this beautiful golden permission slip. He hands it to you. It says permission slip right on the top. And I want you to invite Jesus to share with you what he's giving you permission for. Some of you, it's permission that you're in a process, you're in progress. It's okay that you don't have it all worked out. Some of you, he wants to give you permission to begin to, that just to not try to work up God's presence, but just to rest in God's presence. You have permission just to rest in God's presence. You, are, you get to live from his presence, not for it. And some of you this morning, I see he, he's giving you permission just to, to stand on Sunday mornings when it's been hard to stand in a community of believers. Some of you he's giving permission to, 
just raise one of your hands to God and surrender. Maybe it's down here. He's giving permission to give you down by your belly. You're just to cup your hands and say, I give you my life. Maybe some of you, he's permission, giving you permission to raise your hands in worship. I see some of you, you're, you're like, I've been so scared to dance. But the Lord of the dance, he's there this morning. He's here this morning. He's right in front of you with a permission. So he's giving you permission. You're allowed to dance. You're allowed to dance. One of the, my favorite things that Tracy does is we'll be in worship and she'll stretch out her arms like wings. And I started doing it with her. We would just stand together and stretch out our hands like wings in faith. Just in faith that we, we get to be light and have an easy spirit. That, that we can fly above all the circumstances in this life. Jesus is giving some of you wings this morning. He's giving permission to have wings. What do you hear? Do you hear anything that the Lord wants to give permission? Yeah, I mean, hearing all the fun stuff, uh, but I feel like some people are need, Jesus wants to give you permission to ask him the hard questions, even to have hurt feelings. Um, that may just be because it was permission he just gave me recently to have hurt feelings with him and share that and and then he spoke into it as soon as I gave myself permission so I feel like God wants to give some of you permission to feel the supernatural maybe it's been a scary thing or a hard thing or maybe as a kiddo you didn't have language for it and your experiences and so or it was overwhelming and so if you feel angels or God's presence or an invitation to, to really participate with the supernatural, it shuts you down a little bit. I think Jesus wants to give you permission to reignite that awareness. Maybe he's giving some of you this morning permission to grieve, permission to have lament. That is worship lamenting and grieving some of you he's, he wants to give you permission to have hope again maybe it's hope for your family maybe it's hope for your children maybe it's hope for this church God wants to give you permission that with God all things are possible and I think it may even just be one person, but you need permission to celebrate. It's hard when you're surrounded by people who are hurting, that you love, that you're in connection with. But I have a sense there's someone in here who maybe feels like guilty. Has anybody ever had that experience where you feel like, I have a lot to be grateful for and I don't know how to express it because a lot of the people around me are hurting right now. But you have permission from God and Jesus to celebrate what he's done in your life, what he's doing right now, that he's good, and that you are a picture of his goodness and glory, and he's using you as an example to give others hope and faith and perseverance. So you just received some permission slips. <laughs> it, it's where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God is giving you the liberty this morning to go further and farther than you've ever been in your walk with the Lord today. Some of you, it says, I give you permission to go deeper in God with me, like with togetherness. I'm giving you permission to go farther than you've ever gone to see the horizon lit up with the light of the world Jesus to see everything start to glow with the hope and the light of Jesus I'm giving you permission to live from my presence to actually feel powerful to actually start to breathe again some of you it's been a long time since you breathed in the presence of the living God and he said I'm giving you permission to believe that that can even happen some of you are like, I don't even want to. And that's okay. But I feel like God wants to give someone here this morning permission to want to want to.
So one more thing I just want to share is that I, my, in my experience, worship is a vulnerability practice. And it means you show up where you are and Jesus meets you there, which is part of this permission slip, right? It's, it's, it's almost a word of knowledge from the Lord. Like, I see you where you are and I give you permission to go into the next thing. But I, I'm also where you're at. And I love that because it's part of being a good teacher. You can't teach people if you skip, like, you don't meet them here. One plus one. Right. You don't and teach the a, a kiddo that the abstract number one means one thing. And then you try to teach them math. They're never going to catch up, right? So God just meets us here and says, this number means this, or I see you here, and I acknowledge that, and now we can move forward, right? So even if your permission slip feels like, I've already been over that, maybe he just wants to go back to that place and really connect the dots for you. And then you'll see this like crazy acceleration, because then you can actually be vulnerable. Then you're not living in a place of, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I'm just going with the flow. You can engage. Yeah. Okay. That's so good. I believe that God is returning the first thing to the first place in this generation. You know what the first thing is? What what was the the commandments? You remember the first and greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And when we get to realize that worship, I love, do you ever hear the battle between C.S. Lewis and what was the other guy? Tozer. Tozer. Oh, my dog's name is Tozer. Uh, there's this, this little argument. You could say it off the top of your head. I, I, she has an iron memory, like word by word. Don't set me up for that. I mean, I'm telling you that. <laughs> It essentially, and I could get it backwards, so forgive me if I do, but I believe it was Tozer who said the most important thing about a person is what comes to mind when they think about God. And C.S. Lewis responded in the newspaper and said, absolutely not. The most important thing about you is what comes to mind when God thinks about you. The answer is yes. Both are true. Those are both the most important thing. And this morning, your father... Your Jesus that sent you and gave you this permission slip, you have it. Can, can we just say it's all in our hands? Can we raise our pers- permission slip up? This is my permission slip. And, and we, can we say that he is praising us because of what his son has done for us? He's saying you're holy, you're blameless, you're spotless, you're pure, you're righteous, you're wonderful like I am wonderful, you're magnificent like I am magnificent, you're my son. You're my daughter. I like you. You're good. You're actually good. As I said, it was in the beginning. It's still true today. You're good. And we get to feel that praise of our Father, and then we get to release it back to God. This is what God is doing in this generation. He's returning the first thing to first place. And we get to we get to mirror our Father back. We get to say, you're good. You're magnificent. You're holy. You're righteous. You're, you're awesome. You're perfect, Father. You're a good, good Father. That's who you are. And now we get to live in that first place. So it may seem so simple. Who, who knows this stuff? Right? Who also forgets this stuff? Even well-meaning leaders forget this stuff. Because we can just grind through service after service and we can do songs. Who likes worship songs? I like worship songs. How many know that worship isn't about worship songs? And then we forget. This is our worship. What was that verse about sacrifice and the worship? Yes, yeah, Romans 12. I was actually just going to pull it up, but I don't have my phone. Okay. So, you want to read it? Sure. Do you guys want to hear a verse? We can actually be legit, you know, we did a Bible verse this morning. <laughs> now, we, we talked a lot of verses this morning. Where's your app? Okay, I'm just going to go up. But it's Romans 12. Um, and you guys will have to forgive me. I, I love the Passion Translation. Um, because I think 
it's a great, it's almost like a, um, like a study tool to, to use in conjunction with like a more traditional translation. I think it just gives like the flavor of God's heart. Does that make sense? So I read a lot from it. It doesn't mean I think it should be the only thing you read from. So I just want to say that, but okay. So this is Romans 12. It's the, it's the very first verse. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercy? <laughs> <laughs> to surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices, and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Experiencing all that delights his heart. Who delights his heart? He wants to experience all that delights his heart. That's we that, get to live that place. That's our genuine expression of worship. Yeah. That's it's experiencing all that delights God's heart. Yeah. I think that's incredible. And uh, we live in shame culture, fear culture, and we're just like told that we're not good enough and we're never going to make it. You're too fat. You're too ugly. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough schooling. Um, I believe in this next generation, we're going to see the way even school systems change. We're gonna see the way way marketplace change and we're gonna see the way crafts are made and I believe there's gonna be a renaissance in the arts. I believe that God is gonna break culture with creativity. And I believe it's gonna be through people that are empowered by the presence of a living God that they know who they are so much that they take their authority on like their, their place, whether it's government or healthcare, and they're gonna, they may not have it all together, but they know who they are. And I believe God's even gonna promote people that don't even, they're not even qualified. And, and he qualifies the call. And he wants to qualify you this morning and give you permission. And he wants to tell you that you are loved by the presence of a loving Father. And he wants to empower you to live a life of worship, worship in response to the love. One night I was on my bed and I, 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 was, I fell asleep. And all night from, from the moment I fell asleep, it felt like till late at night. And it was, it was this one song. It was God. And I heard him. He was singing over me. He kept singing this song. I was like, there's a song God's singing over me. And I'm realizing it as I'm sleeping in my bed. As, as I'm in my night time, and it, it was just, I'm pouring out on you. 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 And it was just over and over, wave after wave. Aaron, I like you. I'm pouring out on you. And then something happened in the middle of the dream. I started saying, you're pouring out on me. <laughs> there was an awareness. I started singing, you're pouring out on me. It changed the way my worship in my heart was. Do you see that response? It's not about a song. It's about a truth that I responded to. All of a sudden, he declared something over me. I responded to it and I said, yes, you are pouring. And then something happened a third time. All of a sudden in my spirit, because my brain wasn't engaged, I was asleep. My spirit goes, and all that I can say is you are my father. And then I said, I'm pouring out on you. Back to him. I'm pouring out on you. I'm poor. This is my life. You're feeling it. You're feeling it. You're feeling it. And the only proper response is I'm pouring it back on you. So we're going to go into a few weeks of engaging in activations of worship. And this is kind of a model or a prototype of what we're talking about, what worship looks like to us, where you receive love and give love. And we, Tracy and I are so blessed. I, I met Tracy and uh, we, we just fell in love so quick. It was ridiculous. And um, because our hearts are the same, it's actually really nice when you're equally yoked. And we, we started writing books together. So I, we wrote this thing called The Heart of David. We wrote another book called Beatitudes because 
Tracy, uh, she's really smart. She has double masters, and she also helps establish like a school of ministry. She doesn't like it when I do this, but she, she, yeah, yeah. And she, she, but uh, she, lo- she's the person in the background. She, that's how she always likes to be. But she's really brilliant. So we were started writing books together, and we eventually we'd like to get to, uh, make them available. And we're actually going to make this book right here available for free. But we don't have it in copy right now. But we're going to create, like, on our CityGates City Gates Instagram and Facebook. We're we'll going to post a link. Post a link. And this will give you all of it. And this is like a visual aid as well, because I'm an artist and she's an artist. So it has, like, beautiful pictures. And, and they're all, like, contemplative, like, stuff to spend with Jesus. It's like if you needed a devotional, it's very much like a coffee table book of devotional. So that'll be available on City Gate, Instagram, and Facebook. Did you want to say something? I do. Yeah. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to say the same thing Aaron just said in a slightly different way. I was reading yesterday in Song of Songs, and, and it says, the Shulamite says, I am the very theme of his song. And I was thinking about that when you started telling that story, which is so wonderful. That means that you are the song God is singing. And I know whenever I teach like my daughter or my son a song, whenever I sing over them, and they kind of like, like they, they move their lips with mine in the beginning, and but they're kind of singing gibberish. And then they get a few words, like my daughter loves Waymaker right now, so she'll be like, miracle worker, you know. And, but as she grows in it and she sings with me, like my heart just comes alive because she's singing the words with me. And then I see the light of like revelation on her face. And any parent who's ever done this, you know the feeling that you get in your heart when you watch a little one learn to sing a song with you. And that's what happened in God's heart when he was singing that song over Aaron. The very theme of God's song was Aaron. And then he started singing that theme back. I feel like there's an invitation for all of you guys this week to hear the theme of God's song as you. So if you have time this week, I, I, being a teacher, I'm always going to assign homework. I apologize. Take some time in some quiet on your own and see if you can just get still in God's presence let him sing over you. And it may take you a while to learn the words, but trust me, he will love your like, just as much as he loves when you're like, you're pouring out on me, you know? So, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and so we're also going to try to equip you over the next few weeks. We're, uh, so we're going to, one thing is we're going to have the link to this book so you can read verses and be encouraged and go on a journey of worship. Two, I'm going to put together a play. I, I'm posting a playlist today that will help encourage you through the week. Now, I understand that some of you don't do playlists. Uh, probably the majority of you don't do playlists. But uh, it's going to be available for those rascals that are maybe my age um, and younger that are that have a Spotify account. We're going to have a Spotify playlist. I'm so sorry. Now, uh, and eventually, maybe we'll do some other things. Now, I may actually make a, an, a YouTube playlist as well because I realize that Spotify isn't a common thing for a lot of us. YouTube's maybe a little more familiar. So I'll have two playlists, okay, this week, and uh, we'll get that together. I want you to be able to sit in God's presence. What Heidi is doing right now is so important. She's creating a space with sound that's helping us respond in agreement and open up our emotions and kind of help us be vulnerable. Music does that, and it's what David did over Saul when he was wrestling with demons. He'd play music, and then the spirit would come, and the demon would lift off of Saul. And this is, uh, whether you it's just so true. God is a God full of sound, and what he did what he did in the beginning when he created the universe, he, he used sound. What did you say the other day about, like, the science of that? Oh, well, scientifically, everything is made up of quarks, and they respond to sound vibration and the vibration of sound. So it makes sense that things are created through the speaking and the singing of God, right? Exactly. When God spoke in the beginning, he said, let there be light. And it was the sound that created the universe. And God wants, is still using, there's power in our tongue, there's power in sound. Get in a place where you're you're just putting music over yourself. A lot of people just don't listen to music because they don't realize the power of it. And that's the only reason why. 
Um, they just don't prefer it. Well, I encourage you, even if it's not your preference, to go and sit in a time where you give yourself a little bit of space and just tell yourself 15 minutes. I'm just going to sit and listen to a, a, a couple of songs. Because it, it, nowadays, songs, like one song, is like 15 minutes in, in worship uh, in Christian music today. So just go listen 15 minutes and sit in the presence of God. Let God sing over you. All right. We have to be done, and we love you guys so much. Uh, I'm just going to close with this. Uh, can we just all together in an act of faith, if, if you feel like God is is doing has done something in your heart this morning and is doing something in your life, you feel like you're holding a permission slip and you feel like God is invite you, inviting you to something new and powerful, will you stand with me this morning? This is our prophetic act. We're just standing and saying that we believe God is doing something in our own personal lives. Now, look at that. Look at who you are. Look at your church and look at what God's doing in this church. God is moving and activating. This is a movement. This is a fire and there is no end to where the fire will spread. Now, the rest of us, let's just join together and, and just stand together and just, let's just believe that, that God can even help us want to want to for this next season, that he would quicken our worship. We are created to worship, and we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, we threw out the plans this morning because we felt like the Holy Spirit wanted us to do that, so that was not organized or planned. We believe God is moving. He wants to move, and he is moving. Holy Spirit, we give you our lives afresh. We commit ourselves to worship of you, worthship. We give you worth. We ascribe to you that you are worthy of our lives. You're worthy of our time and our emotions. We thank you that you've given us permission and the commensurate grace and ability to walk out that permission. If you say it, then it's settled, it's done, it's finished. If you said we have permission to walk into this next thing in our life, then it settles it. It's done. We believe it. You said it. That settles it. We believe it. In Jesus' name, we give you our lives into the season. We bless you, Jesus, for what you've done, what you're doing, what you're about to do. Thank you for City Gate Church. Thank you, Jesus, for sitting on the throne of our hearts and over the circle of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen.